All right. Hello, everybody. Good evening. So my name is Patrick. I'm the VP for Counseling for HS2 Academy. And so tonight, um, I really want to give you a seminar specifically so that we can talk about the UC system, because I know there's a lot of misinformation and there's a lot of, uh, like, I guess, misunderstandings about, you know, what the process is, like process and how you select your major and whether or not you can actually change your major. So I wanted to go and do a little bit more of a deep dive on this topic so we can explore this a little bit more and see what kind of options you might actually have uh, in terms of selecting a major that best fits your interest in the UC campus. OK, so let's get started. So first, I wanted to go through some just overall changes to the landscape of UC admissions. All right. So the first is that if you've been paying attention to the most recent acceptance rates, uh, the UCs are getting more and more competitive. And I think part of that is attributable to the fact that the UCs have remained test blind. Right. And so for the foreseeable future, that's going to be the sort of prevailing policy for the UCs. There's been no word about them wanting to bring back the SAT or ACT requirement. So we can assume that this is going to be the way things are going to be from now on. Um, so the thing there, though, is that it all, uh, obviously opens up a lot more um, what do you call it, is competition because, you know, in previous years, there were some students who would otherwise have been, you know, reluctant to apply to even like the top UCs because they were worried that their SAT or ACT scores wouldn't necessarily be high enough. Okay. Um, so that's definitely something that has changed. So now there's even record numbers across the board in terms of like every single UC, you know, like receiving more applications than they ever have in their histories. Okay. Um, there is a bit of a silver lining though, is that, um, you know, there is the hope that some UCs will then start to decrease the number of um, uh, out-of-state applicants that they're currently accepting. So that's that's hopefully going to increase the acceptance rates for California students in the future, right? So we'll have to wait and see on what happens or what develops with that. But that's definitely something that we're hoping uh, is going to be a, a development in the future. Okay. All right. So. Uh, these are the most recent acceptance rates. These came out like about a week and a half ago. So as you can see, that's a really shocking number right now, right? So UCLA is down to about 8.5%. Um, and, you know, to UCLA's credit, most of the people they accept are in fact California applicants. Uh, UCLA has been, a, a, along with Berkeley, a little bit more stingy for out-of-state applicants and definitely for international students, right? It's just a little bit more than half. So they really try to restrict as many of their spots as possible to California residents, which is good, okay? Uh, because for the two most competitive schools, they're really trying to prioritize California in-state students, okay? Berkeley, um, so by the way, just to kind of like frame this, last year UCLA was at about like 11 or 12 percent, right? So we were projecting that it would dip down to maybe something like 10 percent, but it far exceeded that, right? So this is without a doubt the lowest acceptance rate of any public university in the country, okay? Berkeley went down a little bit more. It was uh, about 14 percent the previous year, and it's down to about 11.3 or 11.4 percent now, okay? Now, the mid four uh, these, like, they're still pretty neck to neck when it comes to, like, the GPA requirements for the schools. And in fact, the UC, uh, or not the UC, sorry, the, uh, the uh, US news rankings put them very close to each other, right? There was a time when San Diego was a, like a clear cut number three, but that's changed, right? So now, in fact, Irvine now has the lowest acceptance rate out of the mid four, right? Um, followed by San Diego and Santa Barbara. Interestingly enough, Davis hadn't really declined all that much in recent years. While these three have like had their acceptance rates plummet pretty dramatically, uh, Davis has stayed more or less kind of similar. Um, I think it's in large part the fact that Irvine, San Diego, and Santa Barbara are mostly in like Southern California that might have something to do with it. Okay. Uh, but either way, one really glaring anomaly here is that each of these schools across the board for the mid four have a higher acceptance rate for out-of-state students than they do for in-state, right? So that's something that uh, I think uh, they're talking about for the UC system. The regents are talking about like trying to course correct on this one. And hopefully by the next couple of years, we're gonna see this number go down and then the, num uh, the percentage or the acceptance rates of in-state applicants hopefully rebounds a little bit more. OK, because that is problematic. Like you would assume that like many other state systems, they would prioritize in-state residents first because that's exactly why the UCs are what they are. And that's where a lot of California residents taxes are going right to help subsidize the UC system. So it makes sense that they should prioritize our in-state students more. Right. 
Okay, now the rest of the UC pool looks something like this. Santa Cruz really dropped down a lot, right? So this is the first year that they're under 50%, and that's a big drop. And I'll talk about that later on when I talk about UC Santa Cruz more specifically. Riverside hadn't changed that much. You know, it's still surprising to some people that it's actually at around 68% because there was a time that Riverside was like 90 or 95% at one point. Even Merced is actually starting to reject some people, right? Uh, it used to be like really close to 100%, like everybody got into Merced, but now they're reg rejecting about like one in 10 people. So that's kind of interesting, right? Um, okay, so let's take a look. So now let's talk about the UC application itself, right? So if anybody in the audience is a current senior or a rising senior, if you haven't quite started school yet, this is probably going to be really helpful for you. But if you're an underclassman, this is de definitely still helpful so that you have a, a, I guess, a picture of the roadmap ahead so that you can kind of see what things you need to prepare for in the upcoming years, right? Um, the other thing too is that like if you better understand how the you know, how you select majors for the UCs uh, and which ones are the most competitive, you can then use the next year or two or three to sort of really prioritize certain things that will help make you more competitive for those majors, right? So that's definitely something we need to keep a lookout on, okay? So some major changes to the UC application. The first is unlike in previous years, where um, or when most other UCs, you can pick a main major and an alt or a backup major. Berkeley was sort of different from the rest in the sense that they only allowed you to pick their main major. And I guess in previous years, it made sense because Berkeley was like clear cut, like the flagship university, the number one, and they were also the most selective at one point. Okay, but as you can see in the numbers, UCLA has then supplanted that. So I think maybe that added to the rationale for them wanting to add a backup major, or they just wanted to give students more of a shot considering how low some of the acceptance rates have gotten for some of their top universities. They haven't really announced why, right? Uh, there's also been a minor change to the wording of one of the UC essay prompts, right? So um, the prompt eight, which is the very last one, which used to be considered, or is still widely considered the open-ended topic, because you can really fit anything in this prompt, right? Has been tweaked a little bit, so that instead of saying, beyond what has already been shared in your application, what do you believe makes you stand out as a strong candidate for admission to the University of California? And they've since like snipped out those three words, because I'm guessing they, may, they might make it feel like uh, students will feel more comfortable writing on it, if there, maybe their hesitation was like, oh, I don't think I really stand out, but I'm still a strong student, right? So if that's their thought process, then they might be incentivized to go ahead and try it at this uh, prompt, okay? I think I've seen some numbers that suggest that this is the least commonly picked one. So I, I figured, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that this is the reason why they decided to tweak it. So maybe more students would be, in, you know, like encouraged to go ahead and use this prompt, okay? And perhaps the biggest change that I would like to say, um, for the UC application is that starting this year, they will expand the filing period to start as early as October 1st. So in previous years, it was just November 1st to November 30th. You had a full month to submit your application. Now it's basically been expanded. So you have one full month early to send in your application. And I think that's a good change because some students would definitely be able to benefit from having that wider window to submit their application so they can sort of get it out of the way and then prioritize their other applications for like regular decision a little bit later. Now it does make it though, so that like you have to prepare a little bit earlier. Um, so that's definitely something that we've been telling our students at HS2, right? So we knew about this months ago and we've been getting them prepared for the UC application ahead of schedule so that that way it opens up a window so that they can more comfortably work on all their regular decision you know, applications even earlier, okay? All right. So when you're selecting your major to the UCs, this is what it looks like in the application, right? So you have a slot for your main major, your, your first choice major, and you have a slot for your alternate major. What we typically advise for students is for you to go ahead and pick the main major that you actually want and then pick an alternate major that's easier to get into because it makes no sense if the backup major is just as hard as your main major or even harder than your main major, right? So that's why the seminar is here to inform you about which majors are the most difficult to get into, what the UCs will often call impacted majors, and which ones are not impacted, which would give you a better shot to be able to get in, okay? So as I said, the main change this year is now Berkeley now has, uh, what do you call this, an alt major. Uh, the only other really weird exception to this is UCLA. UCLA has been on record, and we've talked to their admissions people about this, as saying they 
don't really think that most students will be considered for an alt major just because UCLA's acceptance rate is so low now. But if you were to be considered for an alt major, it has to be within the same school or college as your main major. In other words, if your main major is from their school of engineering, your alt major needs to be in their school of engineering for them to even consider you. Otherwise, it's a wasted slot, right? So if you pick engineering and you picked another one from like business or, or college of arts and sciences or something like that, then if they don't consider if you're the main major for UCLA, then you're done. You're not, you know, you're basically denied admission, okay? For all other colleges, the strategy should be fairly simple, right? You pick you know, the major that you actually want, and then just try to find a major that's non-impacted that will give you a better second shot, like a backup choice, okay? All right, so our main tips for when you're selecting your major. So first is to make sure you've researched what are the impacted majors for your UCs. So when we finish this, we'll most likely have this uploaded in YouTube. Uh, so if you wanna go back and review this, like, you know, this year, or maybe if you're a younger student, you can go rewatch this years from now, you can take a look at this and be able to better understand which majors are impacted, okay? Uh, you also, especially if you're younger, wanna start working on providing evidence for your major, right? I think the more competitive the majors, the more the UCs wanna see in terms of like, what have you done to distinguish your Yourself. What have you done to prepare yourself for that major, right? So try to plan and align your activities to show that you're really quite exceptional in terms of your preparation for your chosen field, okay? We also highly recommend, in fact, it's pretty much a requirement for HS2 students, to make one of your four personal insight questions about your major, right? I think this is especially more necessary if you're gonna go for an impacted field, like if you're gonna go for engineering or if you're gonna go for computer science or if you wanted to go business or pre-med, it makes a lot of sense for you to be able to articulate why you're interested in that major, okay? And then lastly here, if you're considering at some point maybe changing a major, right? You're scared off because the major you actually wanna study at a certain school has such a low acceptance rate, but you're hoping that maybe you can change majors later on, you should do some research because, you know, I'll talk about this in the course of the seminar today, but for certain schools that is possible, you can potentially have a strategy major and switch to something else later on, but some others, it's not going to be possible at all. Like if you didn't get in accepted as a freshman for that school, it's practically impossible to change majors, right? So it's important for you to know which pathways allow you to change majors to a more competitive major later on if you want to try for something less selective initially, okay? All right, so let's take a tour of the UC campuses. Let's go through one at a time. Um, and unlike what we showed you earlier in terms of the acceptance rate, I'm gonna go in reverse order, <laughs> right? So hold you in suspense a little bit because I know a lot of you are probably interested in Berkeley and UCLA, and I kind of want to save that toward the end so we kind of build upon it. I will, to be fair, go a little bit quicker on the first few just because they're really not that many impacted majors, to be frank, okay? So first, Merced, it's the newest, new C, uh, it's the newest UC campus. And the reason why I bring this, uh, this up, of course, is that that would also explain why they have the highest acceptance rate, but it also explains why some of their majors may not be as competitive yet because it hasn't matured as a university enough to have like very competitive departments right so that's i think an important thing to consider right um so if any of you are basically uh listed as eligible in the local context which basically means you're part of the top forget the number, like eight or 9% of your um, graduating high school class, um, you're guaranteed a spot in AUC, but it doesn't necessarily need to be, the, or it doesn't mean that you can get to choose which UC. Almost always it is Merced that they assign you. So let's say theoretically, if you applied to a whole bunch of UC campuses, but maybe you only decided like to apply to the top three or four, but you didn't apply to Merced, uh, and if you got rejected to all other UCs, you are still guaranteed a spot in Merced if you are basically within the top percentage of the people who graduated from your high school class. I think it's top nine, if I recall. Okay. All right. So let's take a look. So I would say Merced doesn't really formally have any impacted majors, I would say. Okay. Uh, but its most popular majors are bio, psych, business, computer engineering, and mechanical engineering, which means even if it's not impacted in the traditional sense, like they have much higher restrictions or they have less space, uh, if you are trying to distinguish yourself from the pack and, you know, let's say, for example, you're just barely UC eligible and you really want to try to get a spot in Merced, you might want to consider maybe avoiding these majors first because, you know, for Merced, it wouldn't be really that hard to change to one of these majors later on. Okay. Next up, we have UC Riverside. So UC Riverside is one of the schools that seems to be defying the trend of the acceptance rates going down 
because even just two years ago, UC Riverside's acceptance rate was about 56.5%, and it just jumped up to about 68%. And I think this is in part of a couple of reasons. One is it's maybe not as popular among out-of-state and international applicants. I kind of noticed it was a little bit lower for them than compared to some other campuses. But I also think in part is that they're actually making more room. I think UC Riverside is expanding its campus. They've added a medical school recently, and I think they have a little bit more room for actual physical expansion, which means they can afford to have more students on campus, right? But eventually this trend is going to sort of like revert back to like all the, all the other UCs, which is, you know, it's going to decline in the future. Okay. So, which means, yeah, it's maybe a bit of good news if you wanted to kind of like have a safer UC, I guess. Its most impacted majors are engineering and computer science. So basically any major in their Bourne's College of Engineering, right? And natural uh, science majors like bio, biochemistry, and cell and molecular biology. And of course, data science is very popular these days as well. So these are the ones that maybe if you wanted to do some research and, and maybe enhance your chances, you would maybe want to avoid these, or these would be your main choice and then pick a backup choice that does not fall into one of these categories. Next, we have UC Santa Cruz. UC Santa Cruz is uh, getting a little bit more competitive. This is kind of surprising, right? So Santa Cruz saw its acceptance rate dip pretty dramatically just this year, right? So in the past, its acceptance rate had hovered between like 60 to 80%, and all of a sudden it's now down to about 47%. Um, and when I was doing some research on this, I found out that they actually deliberately accepted about 5,300 freshmen or fewer freshmen this year than in previous years, largely because of concerns that maybe they over admitted in previous years and their like issues about like, I guess, public safety, environmental issues. And so they sort of wanted to do a little bit of a course correct there in terms of accepting fewer students so that is not going to overcrowd campus. Okay. So we'll see whether or not this trend continues as to whether or not they're maybe just going to choose to remain picking a smaller class size or whether or not they're going to go back to in pre previous years. So we could see maybe a similar effect to UC Riverside where the acceptance rate does jump up a little bit next year. Okay. Uh, next, impacted majors. There's not really a formal list of impacted majors for um, Santa Cruz, except maybe for computer science, because obviously computer science is extremely popular across the board, and their Baskin School of Engineering. But even then, it's probably going to be just computer science and computer engineering. All right. Other than that, its most popular majors include psych, business, cell and molecular biology, and environmental science. Next, we have UC Davis. Okay, so UC Davis, one of the mid-tier UCs, but unlike the other mid-tier UCs, it's actually seen its acceptance rate more or less kind of like hover still around the 45 to 35%. It hasn't seen this massive drop, much like, let's say, a UC Irvine in the last couple of years, right? So some other things that we need to note here is that Davis is actually quite strong for natural sciences. I don't know about overtly pre-med, but because it has a strong reputation for its veterinary school and its dental school, it then means that for all those students for this undergrads, like natural science classes like bio and chem are actually going to be really, really solid over there, which also means if you're thinking of pre-med, Davis isn't a bad choice, right? Uh, it's also excellent for agricultural sciences, although I don't know too many of our students at HS2 who are actually interested in agricultural sciences per se, but you know, if, if that's something that interests you, you know, that's one of the strengths of Davis. Next, as far as impacted majors, it's also going to surprise some people that Davis is actually really quite competitive for computer science and engineering. So not surprisingly, those are its impacted majors. So anything in their College of Engineering and in the College of Letters and Sciences, computer science is going to be impacted. Okay, next is UC Santa Barbara. So for UC Santa Barbara, um, it's gained greater prestige in recent years, so it's now actually technically the third highest ranked UCs according to, uh, UC according to US News. Uh, and in part, it's because it's actually been more selective overall and the growth uh, of just the Santa Barbara area in general. There's way more people living in Santa Barbara now than there had been in previous years. But it's also because their engineering and computer science departments have become increasingly more uh, competitive in the last few years. I, I would say that would have you know, partially you know, uh, part to do with their increasing reputation overall. All right, so not surprisingly, again, Santa Barbara's impacted majors will include its College of Engineering, pretty much all majors. And Santa Barbara has this unique setup called the College of Creative Studies, which 
you would think would normally denote things like art, but no, right? So there are, you know, CCS majors for biology, chemistry, computing, math, physics, but also surprisingly for other fields like English. And one of the things with this is that to get into College of Creative Studies, it usually requires like a faculty member to review your application, right? So it makes it more competitive. OK, but, you know, it does benefit from having like slightly more customized programs than, let's say, for example, a generic bio or chem uh, de department in other schools would have. So if that's something that interests you, you should definitely do more research on that. I don't really have that much time, unfortunately, in this summit or go into a lot of depth for all these special programs. But that's definitely something that you want to take a look at. OK. All right. Next, we have UC San Diego. All right, so for UC San Diego, uh, it used to be considered the clear cut number three, but it's since fallen to the middle of the pack, right? So not just in terms of its US news rankings, but also in, ex in its acceptance rates. However, it still has a very, very strong reputation specifically for its School of Biological Sciences, or I think it's called the Division of Biological Sciences, uh, making it a really good choice for any aspiring pre-med. OK, uh, UCSD also has this really quirky, interesting distinction of having something called a residential college system. So in addition to UCSD being a university, there will be smaller colleges within there. But the colleges there aren't necessarily like some other schools or it's tied to your major, right? It's really more of like, like a residential college, like Yale and Harvard have these similar kind of things. You can kind of think of it maybe something similar to like, if you read Harry Potter, similar to that, like there are certain houses there, like you can be a Gryffindor, a Slytherin or whatever, right? So that's kind of the same thing, except here for UC San Diego, these eight different colleges will dictate where you live on campus, but also your general education requirements. In other words, the classes that you're required to take to, in order to graduate in addition to your major, right? But it should have no impact on your major whatsoever. You can be any major you want and be in, in any of those eight residential colleges. OK, so when you're filling out the UC app, that's also something you have to factor in. But just keep in mind, you can be any major. It has no bearing on your actual choice of majors. OK, so for UC San Diego, not surprisingly, it is also the only college that officially lists its impacted majors. It calls them capped majors. So you can check at any point and see exactly what they list as uh, impacted majors, right? So anything in the Division of Biological Sciences that normally will include things like biology, molecular biology, human biology, it's all in under biological sciences. Data science, physics, public health, and of course, any of their engineering majors, it's all going to be impacted, OK? So far, yeah, I mean, that you're seeing a trend here. The UCs are especially going to be a lot more competitive for engineering, computer science, and you know, in a lot of ways to anything like pre-med, which is another popular thing. So biological sciences are going to be very competitive. So next we have UC Irvine, which is now surprisingly the third hardest UC to get into, right? So you saw it was at like a 21% now. Um, so part of that, it's also because, you know, it's, it's become increasingly competitive for fields like business, computer science and engineering. And if you're familiar with that area, like the Irvine area, there's been a lot of growth in recent years, especially as, you know, Silicon Valley becomes more saturated. Some tech, com tech companies have decided to maybe, you know, sort of expand and move down to Southern California, right? So now you have more tech companies sprouting out in like the Irvine and Tustin areas, right? Which is making it also then more popular of a place to study computer science and engineering, right? It also benefits from the UCLA effect, right? We see a lot more international and out-of-state applicants interested in Irvine because it's in the greater LA area, right? All right, next, what are its impacted majors? Okay, so first, their school of business is actually very, very competitive. So that's definitely worth noting there. Uh, it also has the Claire Trevor uh, School of the Arts, uh, the Henry Samuel A. School of Engineering, which would include all its majors there, would be all impacted, and the Bren School of Information and Computer Science, obviously, computer science. So it's going to be impacted across the board. So these are the ones that you're going to want to be careful of when you're looking for, like, you know, obviously try to avoid them as your backup major. But if what you actually want to study is in one of these schools, you can take a shot at it. Just know that, of course, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you. Okay. Next, let's take a look at UC Berkeley. All right, so UC Berkeley is still technically the flagship university of the UC system, right? It was the original UC campus. 
Um, and while it has now seeded its top spot in the US news rankings, as far as the UC systems go, it's now number 22. I think UCLA is like number 20, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it's now got a higher acceptance rate than UCLA, which means it's less selective. It's still probably widely considered the more famous or reputable university across the country. If you asked any lay person about colleges, which one's harder to get into, they'll probably still say Berkeley, okay? Um, and that's especially because of its fields like business. It's Haas School of Business is definitely very impressive, as well as certain majors like computer science and engineering. Now, one thing about Berkeley, if you're thinking of applying to Berkeley, is that its College of Letters and Science is unique among the UC campuses in, in that in most other UC situations, you are accepted to a major, right? Your acceptance rate is tied to which major you're selecting. However, for College of Letters and Science, which is like their main major, I, I would say about maybe three fourths of UC Berkeley students are accepted into LNS, right? You are accepted not as your major, you're actually you know, accepted as an undeclared freshman, and you have to take certain pre-requirement classes in order to be able to declare if you're a major, which makes it kind of interesting because then some people will decide to apply to more competitive fields like engineering and computer science. Uh, Berkeley actually has two computer science degrees, one in their School of Engineering and one of their school, uh, College of Letters and Science. So what some students des decide to do, if, if they feel like they're not quite competitive enough for en engineering, they'll just apply for LNS. Right, but now with this whole backup thing, that makes kind of that makes it kind of interesting because then you know it might actually be possible for you to go for EECS, right, which is you know electrical engineering and computer science in the College of Engineering, and then have LNS as your backup. Okay. Um, Berkeley also, this is interesting, announced that they're now changing their undergraduate business program for Haas from a two-year degree. So in prior years, or even currently, right, what you would do is you would get into LNS and you would usually pick a major that would prepare you for business, like econ, applied math, statistics, something along those lines, and then just make sure you take required courses for you to apply to Haas as a junior, right? But starting in 2024, they're expanding that. So their Haas undergraduate degree is now going to be a four-year degree, which means, not surprisingly, it's going to make things more competitive applying as a freshman, right? So we'll see how that turns out uh, starting next year, okay? All right, next. You see Berkeley's impacted majors, uh, not surprisingly here, are their College of Engineering, which are all majors, especially its EECS major, right? Electrical Engineering and Computer Science is by far the single most competitive major in all of Berkeley. Uh, and then the College of Chemistry is also um, pretty important here because the College of Chemistry is not just for like chem pre-med. Uh, it's much more geared towards if you really wanted to go into chemistry as a career, like you want to be someone in the pharmaceutical industry maybe, right? So that's definitely something to note, right? But even though College of Letters and Science is not in itself impacted, it's also especially important to note that even though everybody gets in as an undeclared freshman, uh, I mean, there's going to be some competition for space, even for popular majors like computer science and data science, because they may not have enough room for everybody to de declare in those majors, right? Right now, what they've been doing is they have a requirement of three like lower level classes for computer science. And as long as you have a B plus average, a 3.3 average in those classes, you can declare for computer science, right? But as there becomes more and more students, who knows if they bump that up to like an A minus average, right? It might jump up to 3.7, right? And so keep in mind, if you're a high school student, there's no honor or AP classes, so there's no bump in terms of the grade point average. Your grade is, the grades are what they are, and some professors are not necessarily known to give out A's very easily at a place like Berkeley, right? So it might actually be incredibly difficult in the future to be able to, de to declare for more popular majors like computer science or data science if the deck is stacked and there's a lot of competition against you, okay? All right. Next, let's take a look at the acceptance rate by college, right? So Berkeley is actually, you know, well, them and UCLA are a little bit unique in the sense that they do uh, publicly make this available. Like you could see exactly what I mean here about College of Engineering being impacted. Now, granted, these are acceptance rates based on the previous year, not the most recently released one. So the most recently released one will probably see this College of Engineering one probably closer to like six or seven percent. Okay. Um, and now this is kind of an interesting point here. The Rouser College of Natural Resources has the highest acceptance rate. 
right? So, I mean, it's even more than triple the College of Engineering's. So if, let's say, for example, you don't really want to go head on against the most competitive people for Berkeley, but you wanted to try to get into Berkeley the easiest way you can, that's probably your best bet. Look for a major in the College of Engineering or College of Natural Resources that you can put that matches what you're interested in. And here's an interesting fact. You can actually change your major from the Rouser College of Natural Resources to something else in LNS with no restriction. You don't have to reapply or do an internal transfer. Whereas if you're applying for College of Engineering or College of Chemistry, you do have to file for an internal transfer. And certain majors are just not accessible to you whatsoever. So like if you tried to, if you got in for letters of science, but you're trying to change to eeks, nope, sorry, you're not going to be able to. Okay. All right. So here is a comparison chart because I know there are a lot of students out there who are interested in computer science as a major. So I just wanted to break it down more specifically. So you could apply to EECS and try to go head on against these people for College of Engineering with a much lower acceptance rate. On the plus side, though, you're admitted directly to your major. You don't have to worry about like, oh, what if I couldn't get into it later on? Whereas for Letters and Science, you are admitted as undeclared first, and then you have to make sure that you get a 3.3 average um, with those courses that are a prerequisite, okay? Um, so slight difference is, you know, like the EECS one is a Bachelor of Science, whereas um, in the College of Letters and Science it's listed as a BA, it's a Bachelor of Arts, but it doesn't really make too much of a difference to most, like, I guess, uh, most uh, hiring managers when you graduate, okay? And there's some other kind of like superficial differences, I suppose. There's more physics and multivariable calculus stuff, obviously in the College of Engineering, it's gonna be steeper. So oftentimes if you wanted a minor or double major in a different field, that's maybe something to think about. If you wanted to specialize in two related engineering fields, then of course, College of Engineering makes more sense. If you wanted to go computer science and maybe something stats related or something econ related, then it makes more sense for you to go with the LNS. Okay, but it's also important for you to think about like, you know, if the acceptance rate is something you're worried about, that's maybe something that would make you want to consider LNS instead. Okay, so now let's take a look at UCLA, which is now the single hardest UC campus to get into. Okay. All right. So yes, we talked about this. But even though it's the hardest to get into now, it's not necessarily because it's become much, much better than Berkeley. I think it's important to realize that, right? So for most of the most popular fields like business, computer science, engineering, I think Berkeley is still widely considered more competitive and, and offers a stronger education. There are some exceptions though. It's film program is really good. Nursing for UCLA is obviously extremely good too, right? So there are reasons why you might want to go to UCLA over Berkeley, okay? Especially if your fields aren't necessarily business or tech oriented, okay? Uh, I think UCLA also benefits tremendously from its location, not just the fact that it's in LA in general, but Westwood is really appealing to students that visit, especially from out of state, okay? Next, it's impacted majors. Not surprisingly, it's Samuel A. School of Engineering, the School of Nursing. Uh, within the College of Letters and Science, uh, specifically business economics and economics, right? Because UCLA is kind of different from a lot of other UCs in it that and that it doesn't have an undergraduate business degree. So most business types will probably pick one of the two econ degrees. And so unsurprisingly, it's very, very competitive. School of Arts and Architecture, and of course, School of Film, Theater, and Television. It's in LA after all, right? So not surprisingly, schools like UCLA and USC are incredibly strong for cinema and TV and, you know, film, right? Just because of, you know, the resources and its location. All right, now let's take a look. So this is a shocker for some people. School of Nursing at UCLA, 1% acceptance rate. That's ridiculous, right? I think they only accept like 50 people each year. Uh, School of Theater, Film and Television only at 4%. School of Arts and Architecture, 5%. Uh, School of Engineering is actually very similar to Berkeley, right? About 8%. Okay, but overall, the rest of it kind of fleshes it out, which is why you end up with about an 8.5% because, you know, you average these out. Okay. All right. So now let's take a look. I also wanted to see which schools are good at certain pre-professional fields, because I know some people will want to ask me, oh, what about pre-med or what about pre-law? What are some schools that are good for that? So we can take a look and I've organized them in terms of the most competitive UCs for each particular field. So let's first of all take a look at undergraduate business. Okay. So Berkeley, not surprisingly, with its Haas School of Business is ranked number three, right, by US News, specifically for its undergraduate rankings, not its MBA program. 
Irvine, right? So this is the Paul Marriage School of Business is now number 30. San Diego is also fairly competitive. And Riverside coming in at 109, it's not bad. Okay, so you might think, oh, why isn't UCLA part of this ranking? Because like I said earlier, they don't have an undergraduate school of business, but it has very competitive business economics as well. So that's what most people will do. They'll major in business economics and then apply for an MBA program later on. Okay, so these are the schools that I would recommend among the UCs if business is what you're mostly going for. Okay, undergraduate engineering, not surprisingly, the vast majority of UCs are all pretty good at it. In fact, you know, the top six UCs are all within the top 40, 45 of undergraduate engineering programs. So that's really quite exceptional, right, to show that, like, you know, the top two thirds of the UCs are actually all incredibly, incredibly strong undergraduate engineering programs. So yeah, that's why it really serves you to be able to apply to like multiple UC campuses because yeah, I mean, even even quote unquote lower rank UCs like Riverside and Santa Cruz can still provide you with a pretty solid overall engineering education. They're still in the top 100 of the five or 6,000 colleges there are across the United States. So that's still pretty good company, you know, if you keep things in that perspective. All right, so what about computer science? I would say even more competitive. So if you're looking at this list with the exception of Merced, which is like the baby of the UCs, uh, all the other eight UCs are in the top 60, right? Just let that sink in for a second, right? Pretty much the entire UC system barring Merced because it's still relatively new and doesn't have a fully fleshed out computer science program are all in the top 60 undergraduate programs for computer science. So you really can't go wrong if you're thinking of computer science. Every single UC represents a tremendous value, which is really great, right? Because the UCs have much cheaper tuitions than, say, for example, a typical private school. And if you graduate with a computer science degree, you're probably bound to make a lot more money. So it's like a really great return on your investment, right? So the UCs represent a tremendous value, specifically if you're going to go for a field like computer science. <clears throat> okay. What about pre-med? Now, unfortunately, there's not any reliable pre-med rankings out there. There's some subjectivity with it. So what I've done is I've compiled the US News rankings for both their biology departments and if they have a med school, their med school ranking. <clears throat> and this usually serves as a pretty good proxy so that we can kind of see how competitive the schools are overall. So Berkeley doesn't have a med school, right? So it's kind of you know a little bit different. Uh, they do have a law school. They do have a business school, but I'm not quite sure why they never historically had a med school. I, I think that's because there's a UC San Francisco, which also is excellent for medicine, right? It has something to do with it. UCSF does not have an undergraduate program, by the way. Right, so Berkeley is ranked number three for biology. So obviously, if you just wanted to get a solid pre-med education, then obviously that's going to be, you know, pretty good school as well, right? So UCLA would be the next in line. San Diego, like I said, had historically a very, very strong reputation for its division of biological sciences. So UCLA and San Diego would be probably pretty neck to neck. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that one would be better than the other. So you have some choices there in terms of pre-med. Uh, as mentioned earlier, Davis, because of its strong vet program and dental program, also is another good choice for pre-med. Uh, Irvine also, this is kind of surprising. And then Riverside has ho sort of hopped into the conversation because it added a medical school not too long ago within the last five, six, seven years or so. So even they are gonna become more and more competitive for pre-med down the line, okay? Next, for pre-law, this is kind of a tough one because pre-law isn't even technically a major, right? So pre-law just simply means you're supposed to take a major that teaches you how to write well and how to think well. And so often traditionally, you're gonna get recommendations like political science, international relations, English, classics, but you can also go for things that just you know, train you to think really logically. It might surprise some of you to find out that even majors like mathematics or physics make pretty good pre-law majors because oftentimes the graduates uh, of those departments will come in you know, able to think eminently logically and be able to kind of like, think about the constraints of the law in terms of, you know, the logic of it, right? So that's something that I found a surprise when I was talking to like a law school admissions officer about that. Okay, so you can take a look for pre-law, whoops, sorry, 